fact remains that they didn't. They only pulled a block away from the house that they were at. Okay, so that's what happened. If their intentions, everybody will tell you, they'll tell you all these quotes from people who was in the room and said, you know, let's do this and do that, sure. I have a lot of people, I done had a lot of times when I said, let's go rock band or something. Was I serious? Was I really gonna do it? You never know. So it never happened. They never mounted an offensive, but they were immediately surrounded and uh, the Panthers were instructed to get out of their cars. They got out of their vehicles. As soon as the last Panther moved, removed himself from the vehicle, Shots were fired from around, all, all the way around the vehicle. They were surrounded. Shots were fired. So Panthers spread everywhere. Little Bobby, at 15 years old, God bless him, was the only person to return fire. He fired one shot back. They say 10 police officers ducked behind their cars when Bobby shot that one shot at the police officers, man. Yet that's how fearful they were. He shot once, 15 years old, and he jumped over the fence. Um, make a long story short, they threw tear gas in the building. Um, Bobby and, and Eldridge came out. Uh, Bobby was instructed to run. Eldridge told him not to run. He started walking away instead of running, and they shot by little Bobby in the back. The police officer shot little Bobby in the back. Well, after little Bobby was murdered, Huey kind of broke out of his shell because he felt responsible because he felt negligent. He felt like he wasn't voicing himself enough because it was so overwhelming what was happening. And he was already fighting a case where he, where he was being accused for murdering a police officer that he didn't, okay? So he came out and this is when he made the mandate, you cannot wear, Panthers do not wear uniforms, buttons, and we don't carry guns, and we don't believe in offensives. We don't mount offensives, this is when he made that statement. And shortly after he was acquitted and he was released because there was not enough evidence to to, to um, keep him in prison for a false murder that he didn't commit. So he was released in 71, and when he was released in 71, what he did was, now remember, the whole purpose of the whole gun phase was because we were being brutalized, okay? Um, their patrol to police program was a program in which they would get a, a car full of Panthers, five, usually five or six deep. They would walk around with a law book. They would have guns, but they would also have a law book. And they would stand 10 feet away from any arrest and they would quote any laws that were relevant to what was happening right there. And they would tell people what their rights were when, uh, uh, when they were being arrested. You have the right to do this or that, okay? Um, the police patrols gave us the attitude of, if some of us know, I know in my hood, they know, here's my ID, don't talk to me, okay? Do you have probable cause? Do you have a warrant? Okay, the only reason why we can say these things, why we even know these things, is because of the existence of the Black Panther Party for self-defense. Okay, the reason why we can walk around and carry our weapons, and, or we can get a concealed weapon permit, we have the right to bear arms, um, gun restrictions are what they are, because of the Black Panther Party for self-defense. Okay, also, by this time, the National uh, School Board had adopted the, the Federal Free Breakfast Program, which was called a survival program initially from the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. That was a major thing that they did. The two major things was the survival program and it was the police patrols. That was a major thing. Feeding kids before they go to school and patrolling the police to stop them from beating our people. Survival. You know, just eating and stopping from you brutalizing you. Survival. So the survival programs brought about gun rights. It brought about the, the, our people understanding our laws in terms of um, probable cause, warrants, and things like that. Police brutality, filling out formal complaints. All of this legislation was being drawn up by all of these, what he would call armchair revolutionaries, NAACPs and urban leagues and like this. All this legislation was being drawn up while the Panthers was out there fighting. Okay? So now, in 71, 72, 73, Huey's out of prison. Gun laws are what they are. We have you know, we got our Al Sharpens and our Jesse Jacksons and, our, and all of them guys that's fighting for the legislation to get pushed based off of the action that the Panthers put forth. Remember, if that action didn't take place, them armchair revolutionaries would still be sitting in the armchairs. It's because the action took place that they were forced to address these issues. So now we got, we got the armchairs addressing the issues, okay? They pushing the paperwork, okay? They not beating our people like they was because the average gang will stop them from doing that now. Because the people now understand, we don't have to take this. That's where the hard, thug, nigga mentality come from. Before that, it was, yes, folks. You know what I mean? So now, we got this right to be like, I dare you to say nigga, okay? 
So, and we're hip and we're cool, afros are the thing now, all of that. Okay, so the point that I'm making is, Huey understood my first year, my goal for my first year, that year in which I was willing to die for, the year that he wrote Revolutionary Suicide for, it's gone. The initial goal, the initial objective, I have fought. I have lost little Bobby. I've lost countless numbers of Panthers. But we got free breakfast. We got black people that's being elected to official offices. Um, we got a free standard political party. Okay, we got a free breakfast program in school. We got the armchair revolutionaries pushing for issues that really affect us. Do we really need to run around with guns angry anymore? No. In 71, he knew that. He stopped that in 71. So what did he do? He started <coughs> the Revolutionary Intercommunalism, inter Revolutionary Intercommunalism, no, Revolutionary Intercommunal Schools. Okay, what he taught was political ideology. Yoga, this thug, this criminal taught yoga, okay? He also um, wrote a dissertation called War Against the Panthers, A Study of Repression in America, in which he analyzed the FBI's attacks on the party in a scholastic manner. He got a PhD in the history of consciousness for this dissertation, okay? So attaining a dissertation, starting a school, teaching in the school was his objectives at that particular time in 1971. So from 1971 to 1989, remember 66 to 71, which is how many years? Five years. Then 71 to 89 is how many years? So five years was war with weapons, with you know being out in the streets and defiance and being all angry and all of that. Five years. Then we had another how many? 18 years of teaching. Okay? He did five years of fighting, two years in prison, and lost a lot of comrades for the purpose that he fulfilled for the rest of his life. And that was teaching. It was ideological development. He taught ideological development classes, he taught political ideological classes, and he taught um, yoga and meditation techniques. Okay, critical and analytical thinking. This is what he did in the end of his life, before 89 when he was murdered. Was he a drug user? Yes. Coke, um, crack, some say. Um, it was just on the scene when he got killed. Um, you know, heroin, marijuana, all of that. 